Hey guys, welcome back. This is Phil Hollinsworth, and on this episode, we're going to talk about the rods and reels that I use when going surf fishing. Stick around. Alright, so there are three types of rods that I take when going surf fishing. I like to do everything from light tackle all the way up to heavier tackle for big species. The first rod and reel I like to use is a 6500 spin fisher with about 50 pound braid. And then I pair that with a 10 foot two piece Okuma breakwater rod. Now I kind of accidentally came upon this rod. I bought it off of someone as a package deal when I first got into fishing and I love this rod. The guides are great, the rod has phenomenal action, it has a great backbone when fighting larger fish. I definitely enjoy the grips on it as well. It's just a solid rod all the way around. Now I like to use heavier braid in the surf because you're gonna have a lot of abrasion when a big fish takes your bait and runs and then they're going from side to side when you're fighting them, they're gonna be rubbing against the sand. So what you wanna do is, is for the bigger fish at least, you want a little higher, maybe 40, 50 pound braids so that you have some abrasion resistance when that does happen to you. And believe me, it will happen. Now I highly recommend a spin fisher if you're really gonna focus on surf fishing because it has more protection, more sealing if you were to get it dunked or wet in the surf. Now you always wanna spray off your reels and rods every time with fresh water after you're done fishing, whether that's surf fishing, or fishing on a boat because you'll get splashed from the ocean. You definitely want to make sure that you're spraying them off with fresh water. But I like the Spin Fisher. I just feel like it's a step up from the Pen uh, Fierce or the Pen Battle. Now I like to use a 10 foot rod because to me it has the perfect length to handle and fight bigger fish without being too much. If you buy higher quality rods, you can definitely go with 12 feet, 11 feet, something like that. I have just found that the 10 foot for surf fishing is kind of the sweet spot. So that's just what I've stuck with over the years. Um, I haven't actually been fishing that long, just a couple of years, but that's what I've found works best for me in the surf. All right, so you might not want to use a 6500 size that may be a little on the big side for you. So what I'd recommend is a Penn Spin Fisher 4500. And I have this specific setup paired with a Penn Squadron eight foot two piece rod. It's great for traveling. Now the grip's not as nice and you can see it took a chunk out of um, the grip here by sticking it in a rod holder. But it's a great little versatile rod. Especially if you're just getting into surf fishing, you might wanna go on the smaller side. Maybe you don't have a truck or an SUV, something that can haul around a larger rod. Um, definitely go with an eight foot because at least then you could, in theory, bring it on either a pier or a boat. So there's more versatility with an eight foot rod. Now on this Pen 4500, I still have a little heavier braid. I have 40 pound on here. Again, it's because I want that abrasion resistance. I've just found when surf fishing, you're gonna have big fish. You're gonna have sharks, Jack Creval, bull redfish, black drum. They're gonna take your bait and they're gonna run. And when they're fighting you, they're gonna go side to side and they're gonna find the sandbars and there's gonna be a lot of abrasion. So if, you're, if your braid can't hold up, you're gonna lose a fish. I like to go a little heavier because of that. There's a lot of people out there who probably would disagree with me. That's just what I like to do. So you've seen the 4500 and the 6500 Penn Spin Fisher. Now I wanna show you my casting rod. This is a rod that I use for multiple uses, inshore, on the boat, even offshore. This is the Penn Spin Fisher 3500. I have it paired on the seven foot, one piece Andy Tournament inshore rod. It's not a super expensive rod, I think it was about 40 bucks, but this combo together has fought some big fish and it's a phenomenal casting rod, especially with the 20 pound super slick Power Pro. And on my casting rod, what I'll always do is keep it rigged with a lure or a bait, something that if I see a school tearing up in the surf, Spanish, Jack Raval, maybe even redfish during the fall. If I see fish tearing up in the surf, I wanna have a lure ready to go. I like the Johnson Sprite Gold Spoon. Silver works as well, but I found the gold, in the gold color, it just seems to work a little better. This is a phenomenal casting lure. It's one ounce, so you can really hurl it on that seven foot rod. 
and you can target bluefish, redfish, basically anything that's out there in the surf that's fired up, you can catch on a gold spoon. One of my top baits I recommend. You can get these in any bait shop or even on Amazon. So when you're in the surf, what you're gonna to wanna to do is vary the distance of the rods when you cast. So for my 10 foot rod, I'm gonna cast at the farthest. I'm gonna have a four or five ounce pyramid sinker or lead on there and I'm gonna hurl this thing out with a Carolina rig. I'll show you in another video how to make those. But a Carolina rig with a big old five, six, seven aught circle hook and then put a piece of cut mullet on there or even bluefish, both work great. Now with your 10 foot rod, I like to target the rip current. Now you wanna target the rip current because what's happening is, is the water is getting pulled back out into the ocean that just has crashed onto the shore. So all this water is being pulled out back into the ocean and there's a lot of little crustaceans and bait in there getting pulled out as well. The big fish, the predators, are sitting there on the edges waiting for that bait to come by and they'll just snatch it up because they can actually handle the current. They can handle the strong rip current. So what you're going to want to do is with your long rod, try to cast out as far as you can towards the rip current. Believe me, if you get hooked into a big jackravel, shark, black drum, red drum, anything that has some shoulders on it and it's just pulling and they're going with the rip current, you're going to be glad that you used the heavier size reel. With your second eight foot rod, your two piece, what I try to do is target the second cut. So you have a sandbar and a drop off, a sandbar and a drop off. And that's what I'm talking about, the cut. Cast towards that, you're gonna find some fish that are running the cut looking for bait. And again, with the 3,500 seven foot casting rod, I'm gonna have something like the Johnson Sprite gold spoon on there, and I'm gonna get ready looking always surveying the surf looking for movement looking for fish maybe it's a a school of bluefish running the surf or a school of redfish i want to be ready for those fish so that i can capitalize when they're coming through okay so i want to show you what i'm using on the 10 foot and 8 foot rod when you're casting it out and letting a bait soak in the water so what i have is this is your main line okay and then your main line is tied to your leader by a swivel see that there then on your main line is just free floating a snap swivel. What happens is you take a weight, this is a five ounce pyramid sinker. You just snap that on there. And the nice thing about these snap swivels is you can change out weights really fast. So that just floats on there, okay? So that's out there like that. And then you have a two, two and a half foot leader um, this currently is just 20 pound mono for the demo, but I like to go, especially when I know there's bluefish in the surf, I'll put like 40, 50, or even 65 pound test uh, mono on there. I found it really doesn't hurt the bite unless you're targeting something like pompano. Now with this, I have a circle hook on there. And what I do is tie a uni knot to attach the hook. And then I tie a uni to attach the leader to the swivel and the main line to the swivel. The uni knot is probably one of the strongest and easiest knots out there. And it's just what I use because it's simple. I know it, it's easy. So what you're gonna wanna do is hook your bait through here and then turn the hook around and go back through the bait so it's hooked really well. Take your rod, cast it out a good ways. It's gonna sit and hit the bottom. This pyramid sinker is gonna dig into the sand. At that point, you wanna reel in the slack just enough so that there's tension on the tip of the rod so you can see if the rod bends over and you'll you'll see the especially if you know rip current it's going to bend on more of a rhythmic pattern now if it's a big fish your rod tip's going to bend in half and you're going to know absolutely know there's a fish on there hey thanks for watching this video i hope i provided you some value today if i did would you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified when my new videos come out hey this is phil hollinsworth thanks for watching my video hope to see you next time